since the early 2000s, computer games and socializing online have only become more popular. In 2018, 80% of British households had a computer and 55 million British citizens owned a smartphone. With these startling numbers came an influx of teenagers and children picking up gaming online with friends and online friends. I'm Oliver, a 16-year-old YouTuber who can usually be found staring aimlessly into a webcam. So I feel I'm pretty well versed on the socialization aspects of the internet. On a typical evening in January 2020, Aidan Jackson, a 17-year-old from the UK, was talking to his American friend online. This would usually be the case for him, as like many teens, he was an avid gamer. Nothing was out of the ordinary until... Good evening, please. Hi, um, I'm calling from the US. I'm currently in a call with my friend. He had a seizure and he's not responding anymore. I do have his address and he lives in Wednesday, Cheshire. Cheshire, sorry, I'm shaking. Aiden suffered from a seizure and if it wasn't for his online friend from Texas who called the British Emergency Services, he could have suffered life-changing injuries. This shows us that even though his friendship was based online, it was still genuine and his online friend managed to save his life from so far away. Another great example of why socializing online works is the communities that can form around a game or more importantly a bigger social issue like cancer awareness. A great example of this is one YouTube community who managed to raise an amazing $2.3 million for cancer research, with the highest donation being about half of that at $1 million. With a final on-screen grand total of $2,332,816.52. Good afternoon, this is News 2, and we are following a breaking story today, a shooting at a high school in Littleton, Colorado, that's near Denver. Here is what we know so far. Witnesses say two gunmen dressed in black trench coats with black masks opened fire at Columbine High School about lunchtime in Colorado. They said the gunmen went from one area of the school to another, shooting students as they went. A student who witnessed the shooting said the gunmen were carrying guns, a small Uzi, and some pipe bombs. Witnesses say the gunmen are students. On April 20th, 1999, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, two former students of the school, killed 15 people and injured 24 others with over 100 bombs and four guns. Eric's obsession with the internet started long before the massacre. In 1996, Eric created a private AOL server. Call now for America Online, a new way to use your computer to communicate, have fun, and get instant news and information host levels for the first person shooter game Doom, which would later become a testing ground for the shooting. By 1997, Eric was writing blog posts on how to make explosives and sharing detailed fantasies of killing his classmates. Eric used the internet as a space to harbor his ideas of killing 14 students. According to a statement made to government investigators of the Columbine massacre, student David Proctor, who occasionally played Doom with Harris and Klebold via AOL, said that Harris told him in 1999 that he had created a level in Doom identical to the Columbine High School. Doom the first person shooter game acted as the facilitator, allowing the shooters to practice. The internet facilitated and arguably increased Eric and Dylan's obsessions to commit one of the worst school shootings in history, leading us to question whether or not our internet usage should be monitored. Real game changer was Cambridge Analytica. They'd worked for the Trump campaign and for the Brexit campaign. They started using information warfare. Cambridge Analytica claimed to have 5,000 data points on every American voter. Further con is your data, which is being scraped from every conversation and everything you do on the internet every day. We know that companies like Meta and Google create massive data profiles on you, which can be used to influence what you buy, what you watch, and what you read. For example, a conversation you have on Facebook, Meta could scrape the data from it. They could look for keywords to serve you targeted advertising and use the location of you and the recipient to add to the data profile. Consequences of this were realized in 2010, when personal data belonging to millions and millions of Facebook users was collected without their consent by the British consulting firm Cambridge Analytica, predominantly to be used for political advertising by parties to sway elections. This exact data was used on the British public in 2016 in the Brexit referendum. This led to questions being raised that did targeted advertising via the use of stolen data lead to the tipping of the Brexit referendum?
So I think socializing online is great. The communities you can form and the friendships you can build with people from all over the world, it's amazing. And it's enhanced society in so many ways. So I do think the power of the data that is being collected every day when you use the internet is an issue. If it falls into enough malicious people's hands, I think we could see the destruction of society as we know it. Oh, 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 oh,